What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Best Self Blueprint. So for those of you who have tuned in before, you already know the mission of this podcast is to bring on people with the knowledge, insights, and experiences that will help you move the dial towards becoming the best version of yourself, whatever that means to you. So today we have someone who I had the pleasure of indirectly being introduced to pageant weekend during the USOA Miss Wisconsin, Miss Illinois. And as soon as I heard a little bit about him, I had to just dig deeper, find out more. And every layer that I've dug in just leaves me more impressed. So I'm going to leave it to him to introduce himself, tell you a little bit about himself, Mr. Anthony Flores. What's up? What's up? What an introduction. Thank you. So yeah, all the pressure's on me. <laughs> hey, you'll deliver, man. I, I see your yeah. posts. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Anthony Flores. Um, I am a husband, I'm a father, entrepreneur, and uh, an athlete as well. But it wasn't always that way, Trevor. Like once upon a time, um, like after high school, I felt like everyone around me was just winning, except for me. Like everyone was going to college, joined the military, you know, getting married at such a weird age. <laughs> and there's just me just like hanging out not really doing anything, just uninspired. I'm like, I really don't know what to do. And I just, when you feel like you see everybody win, you just kind of crawl into a, a hole and just stay there and stay stuck. And like over a course of time, like a, two years, I went up a flight of stairs at my parents' house, uh, 14 steps to be exact. Um, once I finally reached up to that last one, I was out of breath. I It was weird. I I suddenly I just like woke up I think I realized I was out of shape that I was obese dude I was 350 pounds at one point that at that point right there I felt worthless I felt ashamed I felt lonely I'm like oh my gosh like why anybody tell me <laughs> like oh God, I'm this whole like this huge you know but I'm not blaming anyone now, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was like I made a decision right there. And then like I wanted to live a healthier lifestyle. You know, like at the time I was starting to have nephews and nieces, you know, like crawling around, running around. I'm like, I want to keep up with this, these kids one day. But, you know, being a young man, too, we had to think about like, hey, like there's no ladies coming calling me either but like, like i have to take care of myself too in order to get those hot girls that i wanted <laughs> <laughs> i'm just being honest man <laughs> I, that's appreciated yeah so um like the very next day i went to the the local ymca here in sheboygan wisconsin um like i went in there with a hooded sweatshirt sweatpants I didn't know any better, man. I just, I just went there. I have no idea what I was doing. I just went off of like Rocky movies, men's health magazines, whatever was inspiring to me at the time and just work out. Like that's all I knew. And once I got into there, uh, the gym space, like I saw all these, like, there's a bunch of cardio machines I, I see right away. And the the uh, weighted stuff's in the back. I felt intimidated at first. I'm like, I have no idea what to do here. And I see people running on the treadmills. I'm like, nah, that looks too hard. <laughs> and I see the recumbent bikes. I'm like, nah, that looks too easy. And then I see the arc trainer. I've never seen anything like that. And I'm like, this looks pretty simple. I really don't need to run. I just need to move my legs. So I hopped on. And guess how long I lasted on there, Trevor? Take a guess. Oh, man, this is, this is a losing situation. I no, mean, no. I'll throw down five minutes. Okay, man. Well, give me some credit. Okay. So <laughs> I lasted nine minutes on there. Nine. Wow. So I couldn't last 10, but I'm like, okay. So that was like the hardest nine minutes of my life at the time. Why did I stop at nine? I think like recalling back, you know, like, I don't know if you had to do this in elementary school, but like they did like a nine minute run test. So mm. I, I stopped. I'm like, I'm done. It was so hard, man. Like, and I started thinking like, why do people do this for a living? Like, do this like every single day like there's no way i'm not i'm not coming like i'm leaving <laughs> i did leave <laughs> and it, i'm like it took me a couple of days to come back though and 
I started having conversations with myself. I'm like, hey, you said you want to become a healthier person. Like you want to play with your nephews and your kids. You don't want to be alone. You better like you better take care of yourself if you want someone else to think you're attractive. <laughs> uh, like you have to go back. And yeah, I went back. I, I went through the the struggle um, that a lot of people tend to avoid. Um, is it easy? No, of course not. I mean, it's everybody we doing it. But like, I, I gave myself permission to win in this game called life. Um, but like after like after a course of time, like I lost like 150 pounds in one year, and it was magical for me at the time. One like after that year, like I felt good. I look good. I was doing all sorts of things. I was running around with much ease. I was running up and down the stairs like nothing. I'm like, I could do this all day. <laughs> and, was, and the moment like ladies started paying attention to me, I'm like, are you talking to me? <laughs> like, yeah, it was like, look, look. <laughs> I'm, like, like, I'm like, who, me? <laughs> like, are you for real? I'm like, wow. I'm like this, like what they say today, I'm living my best life. That's what it felt like at the time. I'm like, wow. Like, you know, like back then I used to be called Tony. Like, I'm like, I'm not Tony anymore. I'm Anthony. Like, that was my, like, my parents gave me that name. I'm going to, I'm going to use that name from here on out. So I'm like, no, I'm not Tony anymore. <laughs> and I'll never forget, like, uh, you know, like, you know, Thanksgiving, the night before Thanksgiving, um, you, there's a, like, it's the biggest night of the year to go out. Right. And I see like, uh, a group of girls I used to went to high school with. And I walked right past them. And I can remember hearing one of one of them say, who is that over there? And they never paid attention to me in high school. But I thought they were attractive. Now I'm like, oh, I think that's Tony Flores. I'm like, uh-uh, I'm Anthony Flores. I'm like, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that Real quick, I do want to, I want to interject on one thing that I think will be very easy for people to, miss there there was verbiage you used that is so powerful you said i finally gave myself permission to win at life yes. not like i finally you know had the idea that i could or i i really wanted to i gave myself permission to live at life now i'm sure you're intentionally very impeccable with your word choice on that if you'd be willing to talk about that giving yourself permission because i know that's something that you talk a lot on is I call it the mental jujitsu and you talk a lot on the mental jujitsu that is self-development and becoming that new version of who you are. If you could just touch on that, like what, when was it that showed you how important that verbiage is? Oh, that is a fantastic question. You know, like a lot of people like myself at one point, it's like, we're waiting for something waiting for someone else to say like hey you're, you're pretty huge all of a sudden like that's what i meant like why anybody tell me <laughs> so like it's almost like relying on someone else we're relying on something big to happen something shiny to happen like the next big diet to happen like oh now i can start but what are we waiting for for what so i'm like you know what it's we have to take action on our own like if, if we really want to do something we don't need to wait for anybody else to say, hey, you can do this. You're like, we have the ability to do what we want, become what we want. And it's like, if we, we are designed to be limitless, us human beings. And not yeah. a lot of people realize that. Um, so what, because like, I, I nerd out on this stuff. So what for you, and we'll start not yet going into the world of coaching, but just your experience. Once you gave yourself that permission and you did, you, you continued to show up. You, you started doing what I call building a track record with yourself. You, you just, you got there, you put in the time, you put in the consistency. When was it that the shift started happening to, I want this to holy crap, it's actually happening. And like, let's, let's turn on the turbo jets. Yeah. You know, like it's, I think getting over that, that hard part, that grind part, you know, a lot of people tend to say, oh, well, I'll hustle and grind until I die, whatever. I don't believe in that. Like, you know, it's it's hard at first. It's the grind is at first. But once like you've, like you said, we're consistent with the simple things that what it takes to get what you want. It's it's like 
swimming downstream rather than upstream, it's easier because you're doing it habitually now. But of course, if you want to take yourself to the next level, it's it requires different thinking. It requires different habits as well. Um, and I'm always I'm always willing to get a little bit uncomfortable in order for me to get what I want. You know, like I every day is a little bit of uncomfortableness for me. And like at one point doing podcasts like this was really a big struggle for me. Like I I don't. I, I would keep things to myself. <laughs> like, I don't like sharing stuff to the world. Like not like just me personally. I'm a, I'm a, I grew up very shy. That's what I'm saying. I grew up very shy to myself for me to express myself was challenging at one point, but now it's now that I got the repetitions in, this is a lot easier. It's a lot more fun for me, Trevor. I'm having a lot of fun right now with you and your viewers. And it's, it's and my thinking is like, I'm here to deliver an experience. I'll never forget. Like every single time I do something like this, I remind myself you are courageous and and contagious. And that's what I want to be courageous yeah. and contagious for the world to see like, hey, if this guy can do it, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. Is that what I'll get to at one point of who inspired me? <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. There's 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 a lot of journey left. And I, I want to just make sure that we really give credit to the magnitude of everything that you went through. Because I mean- not to like throw too many things down at the front, but people who get a documentary made about them usually <laughs> have a pretty interesting story to tell. Yeah. But okay. So that, that first portion was just a lot of essentially waking up and they're all of the big realizations I've had in my life are very similar to what you were talking about. The way that I view it is almost like it's that pre-contemplation phase of behavior change, right? Like you're not aware of it. You're not thinking about it. And then it's like all of a sudden someone snaps their fingers and you wake up from hypnosis and you're like, oh crap. Well, I'm not going to be able to not think about this now. And I, I really just, I'm curious from your perspective, what do you think will help people get to that point of just simple awareness? Because I think there are people who they, they, do want to be better, but they don't really have an awareness of what is it that's actually holding them back. So it's like, there's something lurking in the shadows, but they don't have that actual awareness of what is the problem. Right. No, I, a simple question I like to ask my member is like, well, what is it that you're avoiding? Like you have to ask yourself that what are like, what are the things that you were avoiding? that you don't, that you haven't done just yet, that you want to, like, you want to achieve this, but what's, what are you avoiding? What certain tasks do you need to do? It's like, for instance, if you want to lose weight, right? Are you, are you eating more whole foods or are you eating more processed foods? And it's a simple question you can ask yourself. What are you doing on the weekends? You partying every weekend? <laughs> yeah, it's a simple yes or no. And then I can just kind of reevaluate what you're doing um and it goes back to like, what am I avoiding or what like what are there's areas of my life that I need to like improve on my environment especially like are people lifting me up or are they simply dragging me down um like I lost a lot of people along the way and was it hard for me of course I, I you never want to hurt people's feelings but I am where I am today because I let go of people that didn't were weren't on my level and like, and that's okay by me. And like, I'll always meet um, people that are aligned with my vision and values, like people like yourself, Trevor. Um, I really don't know much about you, but like, I can tell that you are a high achiever like I am as well. Yeah. So this, uh, it's funny you bring this up. I, I love listening to podcasts almost as much as I love doing podcasts with people. And so I'm always devouring podcasts. And there was something that Tony Robbins was talking about on one that I was listening to with Ed Milet. And he said something that perfectly articulated something I've always had trouble saying around the support cast of people in your life. And he said, once you're my friend, you will always be my friend. That does not mean we will always hang out. So the unconditional side is I will always love you. I will always care about you. I will, I will always cheer you on. 
but it's so important, like you're talking about, to find people that match your present to future and not your past to present so that you do continue to build in alignment with who you want to be, what you want to do, how you want to contribute. And that's so much more incredibly important than I think some people do give that credit for. And so having that just awareness of asking the, the right questions to me is so important. And that's definitely one to add to the arsenal. Yeah. You know, I can go on with like your environment with whoever you're hanging out with your circle. Like, you know, like I have conversations like, Hey, I'm going to go over here. You don't have to come with me. Like, I love you. And I'll like, like you just said, like, uh, I'm around, but I'm going to go over here and see what I can do. Cause I'm really, I'm a curious person. I want to see what I can accomplish over here. So like, uh, like we'll be friends no matter what, but people tend to just not support you anymore <laughs> along the way. And that's okay. That's fine. That's just, uh, the circle of life. Yeah. You've said something a couple of times now that I also want to point out, we will get back to the story. I promise. But one thing before we get back into it is you've said multiple times and that's okay. And that statement I think can empower every human being on the planet is like, you know, I, I, I am a little down today and that's okay. Mm -hmm. Or you know what? Like that, that friend, like we're talking about that friend that I love and care about really just isn't on the same path as me. And that's okay. That doesn't mean it's always going to be sunshine and rainbows and things are amazing there. Like you're talking about, there's going to be the grind, there's going to be discomfort, but there's beauty in those things. And so that's where that, and that's okay, fits in. And so you've obviously mastered the, and it's okay, because you talk about a uh, hashtag easy day. Like I <laughs> like how your job description is an easy day facilitator. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where that comes down to is that mastery or getting very close to mastery of simply acknowledging the path in front of you. And regardless of if it's, you know, nicely paved and level, or if it's thorn bushes and fire, you're like, you know what, that's the path and that's okay. Well, you just got to be courageous. And that's bottom line. It's not, it's not about being fearless. I'm like, I'm afraid just as much as anybody else you know, when it comes to trying something new. But here we go. Like I give myself permission to do those things because I'm a curious person. Um, and not a lot of people are willing to do that, but that's why we're here to like showcase that they can do it too. Heck yeah, man. All right. So we took a little detour just because I like, there were so many just in that short piece of it. Like, I know that was a long period of time in your life, but there were so many nuggets in there that I just wanted to make sure we gave, gave the spotlight that they deserve, but kind of picking back up. So now you've, you've put in the work, you've lost the weight. Not only are you feeling so much more alive and aligned, just physically speaking, but other people are noticing it too. So what, what was kind of the next chapter in the book that is Anthony after these these new experiences started popping up yeah yeah so like I was living my like a magical world at the time I just like I like I felt like I made it <laughs> like this is it I'm, I'm happy right here but life decided to give me a little test I guess you can call it um at the age of 21 I was um experiencing very sharp pain in my testicle area um and I didn't think much of it I just kind of like brushed it off but I'm like at one point I was like dragging my leg of mine <laughs> like I couldn't really walk well it, it affected my work performance I was when I was working at a factory you know like my my girlfriend at the time's like hey you really need to go see someone you're not right and I'm like yeah it'll go away um but it, my my boss actually like told me like you have to leave you like you're you have to go see the doctor like right now because you're not up to par <laughs> like you're not you're not working like you used to so I went to the doctor um actually the emergency room uh because the, the clinic was closed at the time and they did ultrasounds I mean 
um they're like hey like it was on a friday i remember this really well uh it's like monday well um you'll go to the clinic and get your results i'm like all right whatever you know, like sucked it up for a couple days and monday came i was i went to the clinic by myself i didn't think much of it i was sitting in a room all by myself and the doctor came in walked in and he barely like introduced himself and just simply told me, Anthony, you have cancer. You have testicular cancer. And instantly, Trevor, my gosh, like I rem I can feel this emotions right now. This is like why I never shared my story because I, I hate this feeling. But <laughs> here we are. Um, instantly, I put my hands over my eyes and I just started crying like a baby, man. Just like, oh my gosh. What is happening? Uh, and instantly, I was just furious i was so mad at the world man so mad at god i'm like why are you punishing me what did i do so wrong like it, it, like it was a long time ago 16 years ago when this happened and it was scary it's cancer is scary now but it was scarier then because it felt like a death sentence the very first thing i asked my doctor am i going to die he's like no <laughs> no but we need to take action right away but me being in denial, I'm like, no way, this is not happening. This can't happen to me. Like I've, I've turned my life around. There's no way. So I went down to Freighter Hospital in Milwaukee to get a second opinion from a specialist down there. Sure enough, he's like, Anthony, you do have cancer. Like I, the only difference was I would have put you in an emergency room right away to take care of this. So I'm like, whatever, let's go back to Sheboygan and take care of this. And it was hard, man. Just I, 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 was, I felt like I was in that state of mind of being obese again. I was, I felt alone because everybody was working at the time while I was going through you know, like recovery phase uh, of it. Um, I like nobody understood me. And I'm like I, of course I had a really good support system, but I felt like I was alone in this whole thing again. I started gaining weight again because I wasn't moving as much uh, uh, again, and just started like emotionally eating again i'm like oh no like i am reverting back <laughs> um but once i got the clear to start moving again like i started working out again but um i had to go through radiation treatment and that kicked my butt like i like for every single day i would have to go in and do radiation treatment and it physically it just drained me and I couldn't like I couldn't understand why, right? <laughs> like what's going on with me? And again, I was having those thoughts like, why me? Why is this happening to me? Like, but in my mind, I'm like, no, you can do like you can still do things, you can still go for walks, you can still do this, you have the energy to do that. And at the time, Trevor, like it was you were I was like you were advised not to like work out or anything like that. It's way different today. I like to take credit for that. <laughs> um, and like every single day they would weigh me in at the, uh, at the radio after, before I start my radiation, uh, just to see like fluctuations or whatever. And they would notice I was losing weight. I'm like, are, are you okay, Anthony? I'm like, yeah, why? He was like, it's, it's like your numbers are going down. I'm like, good. <laughs> I'm losing my weight again. <laughs> They're like, no, you should really save your energy for your, your treatments and preserve yourself. I'm like, no. I'm going to keep working out. There's like, it's, it's, they're like, why? <laughs> because, well, um, it makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, and like, I wanted to be back in that environment of seeing others bettering themselves physically, mentally, spiritually, all that fun. That's why we go to the gym so we can improve ourselves. Right. You know, even though I wasn't training hard at the time, I just wanted to be there because. It's a lot better than being myself at home talking shit to myself. <laughs> yeah. And you know, like they would ask me over and over, I'm like, Anthony, we tell you to stop working out. Why do you keep doing? And mind you, like I'm laying down on this cold, hard medical table, like half naked from the waist down, so they can zap me, not zap me, but <laughs> give me radiation, my radiation achievements. And I'm like, I'll never forget this moment. Like I finally turned my head because I'm sick of this. Uh, and like question I said I want my life back to the nurse I want my life back 
and she was wearing that mask and I could see her, her cheeks go up smiling. And she said, okay. And from then they just stopped asking me. I'm like, you literally have to kill me if you want to, if you want me to stop. <laughs> it's like, I'm, like, I'm not going to like, I'm fine. Like, even though my energy levels are down and so on and so forth, but I know myself, I'm going to keep going and do this at the same time. Cause that's what I want to do. <laughs> um, but you know, like it's that was such a hard time for me, man. Like it's oh uh, sorry. <laughs> You're good. No, dude. And I really uh, appreciate you like first of all, because of the fact that in your your naturally wiring mechanism is like let's just like keep this to ourselves, dude, so many people are going to appreciate you being, and not just from the podcast, just all of the people you help, all of the people you inspire from coaching, from the things that you do in the world. It's so powerful hearing someone go through what you went through and not only, not only combat it, right? Like not only make it through, but now you have such a reverence for life. You have such a reverence for all of the little beautiful things that come in every moment. And I think that comes from in the fight, you showed up and didn't compromise who you knew you wanted to be. And I think if people can harness that piece of it, then they'll realize you don't even necessarily have to go through a crazy fight. You don't have to be laying on the table getting questioned by nurses. Just stand true in who you are and what you want out of this life for you and for the people who are in your circle. And you do, you really set the the gold standard of that. And I think the added layer is like you're talking about, you had done the right things. You had gotten to the right place. And then what seemed like the universe basically was like, oh, congrats. Here's an even tougher challenge now. And it's like, come on, man. Really? Really? Like, we, I just, I just did this. Like, I, I, I took care of business. Why are you doing that? And so, yeah, I, I appreciate you being willing to get vulnerable and even just talk about it. But also... I appreciate you being willing to go through it because you, even if you didn't realize it at the time in you doing that, your mess has turned into one of the most beautiful messages I've ever heard. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Trevor. Um, I, it's, I, I, I like to remind people, um, life is a beautiful struggle. I mean, it's just because like, for some reason people want some sort of like hero's journey. And they kind of compare myself to compare themselves to me. I'm like, well, I didn't have cancer. I didn't go through obese. I'm like, you, you don't need that. <laughs> you don't need that at all. Like, I don't wish anybody like the the things I had to go through. I'm like, I'm here to teach you. You can do those things without those like pain and agony struggles that like I had. I'm like, no, it's it's a lot easier than a lot of people think. <laughs> yeah. What um, do you What do you think that is though? Because I, I will say I've sat down with a lot of people both for the podcast and off camera, just, you know, because I find people fascinating and it does seem like the people who get it the most on average will say, obviously this is generalizing, but it seems like the people who have really gone through some stuff, whether it be self-inflicted or life inflicted have have this core knowing about them that seems to just be above and beyond the standard. What, what do you think that like, do you, I'll phrase it like this. What do you teach your clients tactically speaking to get them to experience that core knowing without having to go through the suck? Um, my winning mindset system. Like I, it's all about what our thoughts and like our behaviors, like why haven't like why the things like why what are, are you avoiding? Uh, why haven't you given yourself permission to win just yet? So like um, 
I have four pillars to the winning mindset. And then one is counting your wins, um, realizing those simple tasks that you said you're going to do, like, you know, drink more water. <laughs> Did you exercise? Like, uh, simple, tiny things. Um, I said no to I said no to my happy hour. Great. Awesome. And you went to the gym instead. That's a win. You brushed your teeth. You combed your hair. You know, you practiced your excellence. You presented yourself in a way that you always, that you want to. You don't want to look like crap. Um, stuff like that, little tiny things along the way. Like, um, like I ordered you know, prepackaged meals because I know I'm going to be busy next week. Great. Awesome. Win. Keep going. You know, like number, like second one would be um, reviewing your direction. You know, did you, did you do the things that you say you're going to do? Yes or no. And you can actually answer that for yourself. Like, well, if you did, great. Was it how, like, how was it? Was it simple? Was it hard? Like, and just kind of reflect on that. Or why didn't you do it? What happened? Um, how will you make sure you do it tomorrow? And then we get to plan ahead for the next 24 hours of what's, what's to come. Because if we're, if we have this, uh, if, once we know there's certain tasks for tomorrow, we're more likely to do them rather than just waking up. Oh, what's, what am I going to do today? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's uh, so true. And uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. one, one thing I'm curious about is because this is something I think in part success and fulfillment are directly related. And in other parts, I feel like they're completely separate items where I'll, I'll make sure that you know what I mean when I say success and when I mean fulfillment. So success to me is the ability to create the external reality you desire. So whether that be financially, with a significant other, with your career, with your home environment, hobbies, whatever. Success, success to me is that external success. Fulfillment to me is feeling good about yourself when you're by yourself. Yeah. So for you, how do you navigate people who they're, they're having success, right? Like they're, they're getting the wins. They're going to the gym, slugging down their water, hair perfectly combed. Life externally looks freaking fantastic, but there's, they, they, they feel, and they know that they, they haven't really leveled up in terms of fulfillment. What's your approach with people in that situation? Or if you've ever been in that situation, how did you navigate that? Well, you know, it's like um, minding the gap, you know, like you have that outcome and you started over here, but you're over here. I think it's just like realizing like, whoa, I, you have fulfilled quite a bit because you're here, like recognize that you were just over here not that long ago. Like think about those things that you did before you're up to here. But of course, like I'm never really satisfied, (laughs) But like I like, and that's what I teach too. Like we have to like recognize all the the wins that we had along the way too, not just like for today, but like you know, for me last year in the last year, this is a huge win for me. Just like being on a podcast, like there's no way. I like last year I would have said no way. I'm, I'm I wouldn't do that. So this is very fulfilling for me because I'm enjoying myself. This is a lot of fun, as I mentioned before. It's all about like reflecting, reflection, reflection is a. It's a superpower of the high of the high achievers. And we need to recognize those things too along the way. Yeah. It's fascinating. I I feel the the more force you're propelling forward with and the more you're achieving, it's it's easier to forget that we have a little rear view mirror that we can access where it's like you're if you're so focused on, oh well, I'm still this far away from XYZ, it's like, yeah, but what, what was your base camp? So I always think about it like, what, cause people always say, what's your Everest. Right. And so I think about that as you have your base camp, which is where you started your summit, which is where you want to go. And then the trail map to get from base camp to summit. And because we are always living in the pre, well, I should say physically, because we're always living in the present people, people tend to forget that base camp was actually back there. And they're assuming the base camp keeps like somehow inching up with them. And it's exactly what you said. I I think such a big component is really allowing yourself, giving yourself permission to feel the emotional 
experience that is accomplishing those little tasks that have gotten you to the point you're at and not mm. always looking at like, Oh, well, I haven't done anything like big or crazy. It's like, you don't have to just get, get those consistent small wins. And as you do that, I mean, an inch a day, every day for a year will start to stack up and it yeah. compounds. Absolutely. hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like uh, the other two mindset pillars, um, as I mentioned, count your wins, review your direction. Um, this number three is probably my, <clears throat> my favorite and probably my superpower is imagining my outcome. Like I imagine myself, like when I was obese, I imagine myself being healthy. I imagine myself being able to run. I run up and down the stairs. I imagine myself dating someone and like not being lonely anymore. And that's what I was working towards. Like, I like to say, like, create like a 10 second highlight reel for yourself of what your outcome is and replay that in your mind like a thousand times a day. I like, it doesn't matter how many times. Like, now that we're on this subject, you know, um, we have about like 70,000 thoughts in a day. And how many, guess how many, like, uh, percentage wise, how much of those are negative, Trevor? 80%. You're on the spot. You know this. <laughs> you know this. Exactly. Like 80% of those are negative. And it, it's and people are mind blown when they hear that. I'm like, it makes a ton of sense. Like you talk a lot of crap to yourself more than you actually think. Um, and you make up stories that aren't even true. So let's like create a narrative for you to keep on going. My imagination is runs overdrive. I I mastered it. And it's a, it's a skill um, to have. And like, I encourage adults to, you know, redefine this, like, re, like have this, bring the skill back up to life. Because you did it when you were a kid a lot. But some point along the way, someone told you to stop thinking that way. Screw them. <laughs> bring that to life because that will propel you to get what you want a lot faster. Um, Dude, you are speaking my language now. That's <laughs> I mean, that I, I do attribute a lot of the successes that I've had to visualization. Now, what I don't believe is that you can just picture it and it'll happen. Oh, right. Yeah. Work, right. But <laughs> like what, so I'll, I'll tell a quick story. I don't know if I've actually told this on the podcast before. So back when I first wanted to get into public speaking, I would visualize every detail of what did the stage look like? What clothes was I wearing? What yep. did the microphone look like? What did the stage lights look like? How did I feel? What was I talking about? And I, I visualized that, I would say at least six days a week, usually every day of the week for months upon years. And eventually I got to the point where I was doing little workshops here or there. And then I co-founded our public speaking company, BSW, and our first gig, which happened in a really unorthodox way, put us on stage at a uh, high school in front of about 150 or 60 people. And I, that morning, I didn't think at all about like what shoes I was putting on, what clothes I was putting on, none of it. And all of a sudden I was on stage and I realized I was wearing the exact shirt, exact pants, exact shoes holding the exact microphone and the stage and the stage lights looked exactly like how I visualized. And it was just one of those things where it's like logic can't explain that because logically, I mean, now I'm sure if we brought a neuroscientist in, they'd probably throw down some crazy facts, but at least as it stands right now, I'm not smart enough to know how much logic is involved, but there really is such an intuitive magnetism that comes from standing firm in your ability to picture your desired outcome. And that's where I do really believe in the law of attraction and that the more that you're not just picturing it, but feeling it and integrating yourself into that present reality, it, it does something to draw it in. Absolutely. I, exactly. 1000%. That, that's how I'm that's where I am today because of my imagination. And like you said, I, I imagined myself looking, feeling, 
seeing things and down to the sound like smell and sound of mm. things like here i am <laughs> yeah. yeah it's crazy man all right, right and then what's the fourth one learning your language and that goes to like um all the things that you're telling yourself um and then not just like what your thoughts are but like behaviors too like what are you doing that doesn't support your um outcome like it's the more you realize these things like you the better you can take action you know like a lot of people think like these are bad things but if anything i like to think of them as like a they are they're your lighthouse you know like what are the things like go to those things and the like things that you're like avoiding talking crap to yourself if you flip that around those are the things you need to start doing a lot more like that's your yeah. that's your ticket to get what you want so I, I i don't know if this is what you're talking about but one thing I, I think something that falls into this category that you're talking about too is like natural strengths and weaknesses and one thing that's so easy to fall into the trap of that i fell into the trap of for a long time is there are social norms around certain strengths or certain weaknesses that are are almost like crowd funneled into and I'll, I'll give the example so this makes a little more sense so one thing that i always struggled with was doing the same thing for a long period of time now what are most jobs nine to five monday through friday typically doing the same tasks and so i always struggled with any any job that i had i would i would lose focus i i don't know maybe there's something going on up here but what i found as soon as i started getting the freedom once i started uh best self i started doing the podcast i would be working at the gym i'd be training for a race and what i found is to a degree obviously one can only handle so many things but when i had the ability to all right i'm going to go all in for one to three hours on this and then I'm out and I'm into this next thing. I'm going all in. And what I was finding is I was getting a ton more done in the three hours than at the places where I was sitting there for eight because I could just, I, I have really strong energy. And so when I can put that, it's, it's almost like the sprinter energy where I can focus it at something and I can just crank for a short period of time. And once I realized that and stopped apologizing for it, and instead, like you're talking about, went to that lighthouse of that's, that's what some people considered a weakness was not being able to focus for a long time. And instead I just played it to my strength of, well, I already want to do a lot of different things. So why not allow myself permission to set up and orchestrate my day in my life in a way that plays to that strength? instead of calling it a weakness right yeah and like uh another example would be like you know um when i was obese yeah I, I kept telling myself i was worthless or you know, like i'm gonna I'll live alone for the rest of my life um like i convinced myself like oh that was that's how it was going to be but i'm like you know what like what actually supports this is it even true no, I just like, I just made up a bunch of stories in my head and I did the exact opposite. I just started taking care of myself a little bit better. <laughs> yeah. And lo and behold, like um, I'm married, have a wonderful son um, who's a true blessing as I'm winning. And that's why, that's why I'm here on this planet earth is to win. Everybody's designed to win if they allow themselves to. Yeah. Which congratulations on the wife, the son. That's amazing. Especially just the journey you had to, to bring them into your life. I think that's phenomenal, but that's so true. Everyone is designed to win. And it makes me think of now, this may not have been Henry Ford, but I'm just going to credit him with it because I think that's true. Uh, that quote of whether you think you can or can't, you're probably right. Yeah. I, yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> and like that, that is, it, it, it goes to exactly what you're talking about. If, if you, if you believe that you're unworthy, you will find supporting evidence to confirm that you're unworthy and you will start almost consciously or subconsciously steering the ship that is your life in that direction. If you plug into the system, like a little circuit board, like, nope, unplug that, plug it into I am worthy. And you just, you let yourself sit with that. 
that ship is going to start to change directions a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I really like that. And I like that you call it a language too, because really it is that whether it's internal dialogue, behavior, actual conversations you're having with people, it all boils down to that language of your life. Like how well do you know yourself? It's, yeah. And like, once you practice that mindset, when you mindset, like you will discover a lot more about yourself than you have in the last, like, since you've been born. <laughs> yeah. So true. Uh, it is, but it just takes practice though. I mean, it, it sounds way too simple, but pe- a lot of people tend to avoid them. Uh, those simple practices. It was like, we, we want to find the hard things, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we want like every, whenever it's like a new boot camp opens up, people rush to it all oh, because it's going to be hard. This is this is what it needs for me to get get myself to that next level or that new diet that comes out. Like oh, this is it. This is the new hard thing. I'm going to try that out. No, just like simple consistency, the name of the game, and most importantly, you got to be patient along the way. Yeah, yeah, I know you. You actually um, you talk about that. S- I don't, I don't know if it's success that is the uh, outcome of it, but you talk about the equation of simplicity plus consens- consistency plus patience. And I, I that that right there is the mantra that, that has guided me the last few months is what are the little things I can do consistently? How do I simplify not just uh, with the things that I'm doing, But what can I eliminate that's just spinning the wheels going nowhere? What are the things that I'm doing that don't light me up, that I'm just doing out of a sense of obligation? So I think that's that's important too, is how can you simplify by subtraction? Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, having I think having the patience for the outcome, but still putting in the work and having a little urgency with the process is just a deadly combo for success. Right. That's all it really is. Like we, we gave away the secret. <laughs> That's it. There you go. Enjoy your life. Podcast, Podcast over. over. No. Um, so the kind of the final component story-wise, and maybe I'm skipping over, which if I am, definitely let me know. But so you went through multiple long-term grueling battles, right? To, to get yourself to a place where it's like, man, I, I, I know I'm strong. I know I'm worthy. What then guided you to become a coach? Because this, this always fascinates me because there are plenty of people out there who they go through this journey. They do it really well. They, they learn about themselves. They grow, they experience success, joy, peace, abundance, fulfillment, but they, they just don't have that urge to coach. So what, what was it about your journey that then got you out of the factory and into what you're doing? Um, yeah, again, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I was working at a, at a factory and all of a sudden I get a call from a friend that I, I used, they used to be at the YMCA and it was working at a, at a higher end gym in the area. He's like, Hey man, you got a pretty cool story with your obese and cancer and you being an endurance athlete right now, you would be a really good personal trainer here. Like, can I, can, you should really apply and I'll like, we'll get this like set up right away. And I'm like, duh, I'm not I'm like, if it gets me out of the factory, hell yeah, I'm going to do this. <laughs> and sure enough, I applied and like the, like the manager was like blown away, like about my story. And for me personally, which we could talk about some other time, like, I don't think my story is that inspiring. It's not, I'm not looking for you know, anything, I'm not looking for comments or anything like that, the feel good comments for me, like me personally, I just didn't feel like it's inspiring because I saw it no other way. Like Mm. this, like I was in pain. I was, I want to get out of it. It's like, we either motivated by pain or pleasure. I, for a very long time was motivated by pain. So I went away from it. I'm like, not, not avoiding it, but just like, I am going to get out of this because that's the only way I see it. I'm like, I, there's things I want to do in life, <laughs> but anyways, so <clears throat> got the job being a personal trainer at this um, higher end club around the area here. And it was weird. Like, like people like wanted 
to be trained by me. I I didn't I didn't know anything <laughs> at the time. I'm like, um, it was but it was awesome though. I, I love the whole experience of being a personal trainer. Um, but unfortunately, I ended up getting fired, man. <laughs> because well, to be honest, like I was. I want to get out of the factory so bad. I kind of lied saying I had a personal training certification. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't honest completely. I was like, I was working for it, but they gave me a deadline. Hey, like, Hey, if you get your certification by this date, you'll still have it. So by the end of that date, I, I was, it was the date of my testing and I failed by four points, Trevor. Oh, <laughs> by four points. I'm like, I, cried like a baby right afterwards it was a long drive home um after that test um and like they they, they had to let me go because i signed a contract with them but like i don't fault them it was all on me and my time there was amazing i got to meet a lot of awesome people i got to help change a lot of people's lives there and but i had the chance to go back after i passed it two weeks later but then i thought why should i limit myself to just a facility. Why not just like do something else? So I got into like corporate wellness instead. Um, starting out like uh, teach like teaching and coaching um, employees at large companies, small group, small businesses. And then I started thinking, man, why should I start living myself to just only these companies? So I opened up my own uh, fitness studio in Anthony Flores Fitness here in Sheboygan. And of course, COVID hit. <laughs> like it was a lot of fun. Like I, I loved it. Um, um, having that large group fitness and COVID hit. I'm like, okay. Why should I limit myself to just a three mile radius when I can coach the whole world? <laughs> like I literally make myself limitless. Like I said earlier, we are designed to be limitless. Like why should I limit myself to just? a three mile radius. I can help anyone in the world. We have the technology. We have the resources. It's never been easier to do whatever we want. And I'm like, but to answer your question, why do I do this? It's because there's a lot of people that like me, just, uh, they, they just don't know. And they were too afraid to ask, but I'm here to say, you know what? I didn't know anything better either. And you can come talk to me if you want to. And like, if I'm not the right person for you, I'll help you find the right person that will match you. And it's, I don't want people to feel what I feel. I, um, as, just, as I said many times, like worthless and just lonely. No, you deserve to feel like a winner. You know, I want people to feel like a, how I feel. I want triumphant in short. Cause I overcame quite a bit of things, but you can just uh, triumph in your own unique way. Dude, dude, you are speaking my language now. All right. So one thing that I think is so important that you said too, as a coach, and this is something that I, I have zero ego attached to is if I don't feel I'm the right person, I will happily help you find the right person. I, I'm not attached to like energy doesn't lie, right? Words might, actions even might, but energy doesn't. And so if I know that kind of like the energy is off or so, something isn't there where I know it's just not going to be a good fit, yeah. I am happy to like, to me, it's not about the money as much as it is getting the person exactly what they need to live the best life they can live. And so that's, I, I'm so happy to hear you say that of, you know what, like no coaches for every person, whether it's personality, skill set, training style, whatever it is. And as a coach, if there's any other coaches or professionals, if, if you know someone's not for you and your main objective is to help this person, set the pride down, put it off to the side somewhere and help, help them find the right person. And so I, I just think that's phenomenal, man. And I, I think that's true just as a human being too. I think, and I'm guilty of this. I think it's so easy to try to give advice on something that you know you're not oh, yeah. 
at the level to be giving quality advice on. Um, now that's a little bit of a tangent, but yeah. So yeah, I appreciate you saying that, but the other thing too, man, is I, I, I vibe with the, that statement. Like, I just want to see people win. And I have uh, an accountability group. It's just me and a couple of my buddies who every week we put together just the, I call it my hit list. So like the things that I need to do to make sure that I have a productive week, a fun week, a, a present week. And what I always tell them is I'm doing everything to make sure I can beat you. Like I want to have a better week than you. But I also want you to have a better week than me. So I'm going to be working to have a better week than you, but I hope when we sit down, no matter how good of a week I had, you show up and you're like, oh man, my week was even better. <laughs> like it's, it's, it's like the high tide raises all ships, right? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Um, add me to that group. <laughs> yeah. And it's, that, that's another one of those, right? Like find the right supporting cast yeah. of people who not only like you were talking about, are aligned with your just where you're going but people who are going to help you get there faster who support you who challenge you they aren't just yes men they'll actually challenge you know to make sure that you are doing what you said you wanted to do yeah 100 percent, man definitely um so yeah oh yeah go ahead no it was i was going to go on to um being a, an athlete as well you know like i've I, I back when lance armstrong was the man at the time going through my cancer treat, this was my guy i was going to mention who inspired me like mm. i'm like you know what this guy's winning i want to feel like him i want to be like him like not not necessarily go to tour to do tour de france right <laughs> my own version of it i'm like if he can do it i can do it my like, um and that's like my my purpose right now. Like I want to inspire people like Lance Armstrong did for me. Um, like, a, and he, he gave me permission uh, to be like a, an endurance athlete. Oh my, I'm, I got like, I've gotten into you know, like half marathons, full marathons. I got into the triathlon scene, did everything from a sprint distance to a full Ironman. And I was pretty good uh, for for an amateur. Like I was, I was, I was invited to the, the USA tri age group triathlon um, one year um, championships, and I even got to go to the world championship. The you know, yeah, the world championships as well. Um, but then like I like I discovered what was that Deca Fit and High Rocks when um, COVID hit. I'm like, oh, what is this? <laughs> I, I get, it's like the best of both worlds for me. Like I have the endurance and I have the strength to do this. I'm like, so why not? I want to do this. So once the world finally be opened back up after COVID, I'm like, I'm doing this, like, especially high rocks. Cause I was kind of looking through, there's a world championship event in Germany. And I'm like, say no more. I'm going to do this. <laughs> like I've never been to the other side of the world um, before. I'm like, how cool would that be to, to compete and qualify to compete in a world championship? I'm like, I'm going to do that. And lo and behold, I did my first high rock competition. And like I ended up being third place in my age group. I'm like, whoa, Dang. I'm like I'm actually good at this. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, sweet. And like I, my second event, which led me to like, uh, after qualifying or uh, placing in that, I was qualified for the USA uh, championship held in Chicago, like two months later. I'm like, okay, cool. They're probably doing this because of COVID reasons. Like they're not doing the other side of the world right now because of travel restrictions, whatever. I'm like, I was just happy to be part of that. I'm like, hell yeah, I'm going to do this. And I ended up being like second place in that, in that in the championship. Uh, I shaved off like 10 minutes off my time as well. And Lo and behold, man, I got an invite two days later from High Rock saying, congratulations, Anthony, you qualified to go to Germany. Oh my, are you kidding me? This is really happening. So like this all correlates to imagining your outcome, part of the winning mindset. Like I imagine myself just doing it, keep on going. Like I did the things I had to do 
in order for me to qualify. Like I ate better. I trained with purpose on purpose. Like I, I slept more. I recovered better. Like everything I needed to do to perform at that high level. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to Germany. <laughs> and yeah, it was, it was awesome going there and being able to compete. Um, and I convinced myself, I'm like, you are going to win this thing. You are going to become the world champion of high rocks. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. <laughs> but um, like I was, I ended up being like top five, and but I was the number one U, um, um, U.S. athlete to finish though. Wow. So I'm, yeah. So I'm. Uh, I guess I wasn't specific enough on being <laughs> like number one. Of the yeah. But like I, I gave it all my best and that's all you know, like, of course, like I was disappointed a little bit, but then I realized like, you know what, man, you did everything you could mm -hmm. and you showed up, you performed at the highest level you possibly could at that day. And those other dudes like deserve it, you know, like whatever. And it's, I, I went there to have fun. Um, and of course compete at a level that I never thought I could. And I did. Um, so yeah, dude, yeah. It, that's one thing that I love about training camp is it really like when you are you're eating all if not all the right foods you're eating a lot of the right foods yeah. you're consistent and trying to get quality sleep quality recovery quality training and it really opens you up to oh my gosh this is what the human body is supposed to feel like mm -hmm. where you're you're loose you're strong you're fast you you have durability you have endurance balance and you just feel good you feel energetic that's something that uh it's it's funny because every time i get into a training camp i'm always just thinking about man this is crazy if i just stay like if i just kept doing this no one would catch me i'd, I'd be gone no like see you later i'm i'm levitating from my self-mastery but yeah then it's like you do the event the race whatever you're like okay yeah you know what I'm going to celebrate a little bit <laughs> and uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's fascinating though, that just that not even robotic, but just that flow state that you get into when everything is dialed, at least that's, that's what I experience when everything is very specifically calibrated to optimal performance that so easily trickles over into other areas outside of what you're training for yeah I, I definitely get what you're saying for sure and like i haven't been able to do any events or anything it's been i don't know 15 16 months since i did that um only because like i, I hurt myself <laughs> at that event i tore uh micro i could tore micro um abductor um right now so i'm still fully not fully healed just yet and it's funny that you say like you know afterwards like we kind of like you revert back right <laughs> so now i had that realization i'm like well how can i pour that energy into other areas of my life i'm like you were dedicated for that amount of time like why don't you do that with relationships why don't you do that with your business why don't you do that with being spiritually like it, i don't need an event life is the, the event mm-hmm so and I think that's a lot of people's problem, like athletes um, issue that they face. Like once they're done, they feel like there's nothing out there. Um, like I've, I felt that way a bunch of times with, you know, after triathlons and, you know, marathons. I'm like, I don't know what to do now. I feel like I've poured all my energy to this and I get to revert back to certain ways. But um, but I'm I'm here to win in every facet of life because that's what I do. That's who I am. And I'm here to dominate. I'll be right there alongside you, my friend. <laughs> yeah, All buddy. right. So we'll, we'll start to wrap this up. One question coming from someone who is a coach, an athlete, an inspiration, whether you believe you are or not, <laughs> who has a, a high level of self-awareness. I love asking this question to people like you. If I gave you, if I gave you this microphone and it was 
hooked up to an earpiece that every human being on the planet had, what is a message that you would tell the world that you just believe everyone, everyone needs to hear right now? Whoops. Um, I guess. Simply, like I said before, you need to give yourself permission to win and how you do that. And of course, then I got my mug. It says courage on there. You need to flex that courage muscle. Because it's it is scary to change. Change is scary, no doubt, hundred percent. But once you have that strong desire to get what you want, like it, it just feel a lot easier. You'll you'll be able to feel feel fearless. But you're really just you're simply just courageous at the same time. And for that. Every day will feel like an easy day, no matter what. Hashtag easy day, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I dig it. All yeah. right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on here. Before we really wrap things up, uh, if you want to just let people know anywhere you want people to come follow you, if you want them to just kind of check out your story, if you have like a website, uh, social media accounts, anything that you want to direct people to, if you want to let them know and then i will put the links down in the comments yeah sure so um you can find me on facebook uh anthony flores that's my personal page um on instagram tiktok youtube it's anthony w flores you won't find much on tiktok or youtube just yet but it's coming um and also if you're interested in a, a little bit more of my coaching pro program you can go and fill out a questionnaire at the easy day life.com. I love that website. All right. Well, yeah, dude, thank you for coming on here. And I, I like to say, I, I appreciate the time. I appreciate you. You're so present too. it. That's something that I can very much tell throughout an interview is does the person have a million other things going on or are they here? And so I really appreciate you being here, being present, but I just appreciate what you're doing for the world, man. Like as a coach, as an athlete, as a human being, just setting the example, being the example for what it looks like to win and to pursue winning and having that easy day mentality. I, I on behalf of many other people who I'm sure will say the same thing in the future, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much. And of course, I was going to be present for you here. You invited me and it's a special honor. And I have, like, I have to respect that. Heck yeah, man. Well, I think we should uh, let the people go do something else now. For those of you who have made it to this point, thank you so much for tuning in. As always, you know the YouTube spiel. If you liked this video, stuff we talked about, that's why there's a like button. If you are not already subscribed, there will be plenty more guests on the podcast weekly podcasts, weekly Trev talks coming out where I just spit some mumbo jumbo about stuff reeling around in my head. And then Project Ultra is in full swing. So I am doing video journals and training block breakdowns and all that for that. So go ahead and click subscribe if you're not. And then if you have questions, comments, agreements, or disagreements on anything you heard, throw that in the comments. But I will leave it at that. Thank you everybody again for tuning in. And we will catch you next time. Peace out.